Hey guys, welcome back to Bag Lady Studios. I think it's time to go sew. So, here we go. So welcome back. Let's see what we have in store for today. Everybody knows I did that Purse Pal Hacks video. Um, probably I released it about three weeks ago. Well, I've had such great responses and so many people wanting to see other things and for me to try other ways to do some hacks that I decided I would do a part two. So here it goes. One of the comments I had was a way to better protect the card slots. So either doing a zipper or more snaps or something that better covered those card slots. I think that's a great idea. I also had somebody say that they were planning on doing that, but they were gonna use the RFID, I believe, that, that fabric that keeps people from stealing your credit card information. That's another great idea. I don't have any of that, but that is a super, super idea, and I'd love to see that once it's done. Another suggestion I had was to make it bigger. But okay, I can do that. So I printed out the pattern at 120% and that's what we're going to do today. Um, I did have to juggle it a little bit because the 120% was bigger. It printed off the paper. So I had to do some measuring and some finagling, but I got it to work. So I've already cut that out. Um, oh, and a wristlet strap. So we're gonna add a wristlet strap to this one. I also had somebody say that they'd like to see me do more of the steps. And I think that's a great idea. So I will try to bring you a little bit more of the how-to, but honestly, if you buy the pattern, which will be linked up here or here, um, or in the description, um, if you do that, I, they, she's got great directions. And really these hacks are very simple. So you could follow her directions, except for where you're changing some of these things up. Let me know what you think. So I went ahead and I did print this out bigger. I have all my pieces and parts printed. I did something a little bit different. I went ahead and I rounded the corners because some of these ideas I had, I thought would be better and easier to do if the corners were rounded. This is going to be my fabric, which is going to be matching the video that I'm going to be doing next, which is going to be the Plumeria crossbody bag. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. But this is going to be a little wallet that I can put in that. I went ahead and I slid over. I found my halfway point on my vinyl. And then I scooched over my card slots because I'm going to add some magnetic snaps here to this side, right along here. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Right along here. I went ahead and did the same steps for my zipper pocket. And this is the same as what I did in the previous video. So if you wanna see that, there'll be a link also to go to the part one. But I cut out the Decoville. I had my fabric a little bit bigger. I glued it down and I made my hole. I did widen it just a little bit from what the pattern suggested. So, right there to right there because I wanted to make it just a little bit bigger. But everything else for this is going to be the same. I'm gonna go ahead and add the snaps to the vinyl portion of this so that way they're hidden. Um, I'm just using three magnetic snaps. I'm also going to turn this portion. So I'll show you that part since it's a little bit different. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the magnetic snaps to do that, you're going to put down your washers, measure out where you want to mark it, put your little holes in there and push those snaps through. Okay. So there you have the holes. And I used my rotary cutter. This was my chalk that I used to mark my center. And then I used my punch, which is now losing all its little pieces, but I used the punch to go through those. I do put a different mat behind it, and you can see it like leaves these little indentations because I don't want to ruin my good um, cutting mat. So now I'm going to measure out where I want these snaps. And I'm going to get my snaps out. 
and go ahead and put those in place. So I'm going to need three washers for this top and then three, well, these are the males. I want three females. So here we go, one, two, three. I debated about putting a zipper around this and then decided not to do that. And I'm still not sure if that's a good decision or if that's a bad decision. I just thought it might be difficult put a zipper on this I couldn't I was having problems wrapping my brain around it so for me to find the center points and where I want to put these I'm just going to kind of line this up a little bit on my cutting mat so it's about even that way I can kind of use some line so I could put one right here because I have a line there I think I'll do that. I want to also make sure I leave enough room to top stitch. Now I haven't done a test one of these yet, so I'm not positive how this is going to work. So we're going to watch this as I go. Let's put those out of the way. All right, let's make sure these all line up. I think if I put it right, let's see. All right, so I'm doing it at about one, two, three, four, five. Mm hmm. Say a little over. That's a half an inch there. About three quarters of an inch in. So it's not a full inch. About three quarters of an inch in that will give me enough room. And if I wanted to, I could put my little chalk line right along here, just so that I could see it once I take it off. And if I even wanted to get more precise, let me go ahead and I will do one there, right there, and then we want about a halfway point. So measure these out. About one, two, three, four, five, six inches. So let's go in one, two, three, right there. There we go. Now I got my lines laid out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my washers kind of right on the inside of that because since I'm turning this, I will have a seam. And I could actually flip this, should have probably flipped this over and just done it on the other side because now I'm like, okay, now I got to put lines down. You won't see it anyway. Let's see if my jelly marker will work. Yep. Alright, there's that one. There's that one. And there's that one. And then this chalk will just literally wipe right off. I want to back it with some Decoville. So I'm looking for some scraps of Decoville, which I have. I'm going to just cut three squares out of Decoville. Grab a washer. These little boogers are hard to pick up. I'm gonna grab a washer and just mark three of those. 
Actually, I think I'll go through all three at the same time. I'll tell you what, I have stabbed my finger so many times doing this, and it's not fun. It actually hurts quite a bit. So be careful you know where your finger is. Because when you come in there, mine's actually bent. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's bent because I stabbed myself with it. And it was a painful lesson. So you're just making little tiny slits. I know this is probably repetitive for some of you guys. If so, you can just skip ahead. But since I was asked, I'm going to do it. There's that one. That one. Ooh, that one almost got my finger. my little parts is. Put that through. Push this one through. This last one. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Got all three of them through. And back it with my Decoville. Boom, boom, boom. Little annoying washers. And I'm going to get these started, but I'm not going to completely turn them by hand because I have. Um, rheumatoid arthritis and I have lupus and it makes it very hard for me to do some of these things so I get it just started then I grab this not my scissors but I grab your little key fob press and I let that do it and it does a fabulous job and it saves my fingertips. So there we go. I've got the three snaps on there. You can see that it just wipes right off. I can get a damp rag and totally get that cleaned off. That's going to be my snaps on there. And then I'm going to put snaps on this side. So far so good. So I'm just going to repeat the same thing. In order to find my snap parts, I could either measure it back out or I could simply do what I'm doing right now as I'm finding it. I can put my finger on either side and I'm just gonna mark the center. Lining it up, making sure my fabric lines up. Finger on either side, mark that center. And the same thing, fabric on either side and mark the center. I'm gonna do this part off camera. All right, so I've got both sides done. They're gonna work perfect. So there you go. It's not too straight here. I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work on my card slots. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm thinking and we're gonna see together whether or not this works. So for my card slots, I use muslin. You can use ribbon. You can use so many different things. Um, landscaping fabric is nice and thin. You just want something that's pretty thin. And this works out pretty well. So one thing I'm curious about is since I enlarged the pattern and I didn't account for the size of the card slots, I'm sure those card slots are bigger now. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my original ones, which measure out to be about two and a half inches wide. I will measure this one, and this is three inches wide. 
so my handy dandy lovely lovely little two and a half inch ruler isn't gonna work quite as well I'm gonna go ahead and make it work but really if I had a three inch it would be better but what I'm gonna do is I have folded so this is what, one two three four folded four times so and made sure that it's all caught and I'm just going to count over one, two, three. And this is awkward to do with the camera the way it is, but here we go. And it got a little crooked, but I think it will be fine. I think actually I'm going to cut another one just in case that this also goes a little short because remember I made this bigger so it makes sense that all the dimensions are going to be just a little bit bigger so let me kind of line that up to cut this without cutting my fingers off. There we go. So now I have an extra, just in case. Somebody asked me about this ruler. This is the Omni Grip, and it's a two and a half, and I love it. It's a two and a half by 12 and a half. It is probably my most used ruler. The next step is going to be in putting my double-sided tape down for my card slots and in the directions in the pattern it says you go up a half an inch and then you go down a half an inch well this is bigger so I'm gonna go up an inch and I'm gonna put my first row of double-sided tape if I can find it oh it's hiding of course got a shadow here and I am sorry there's some shadows going on. I think I can fix that. Let me check. Holy moly we have light. Oh and I just took you off for a ride. I am sorry about that. My knee hit it. All right there we go. Whew. Sorry. Took us both for a little ride there. My chair moved and I kicked the tripod and that almost was an epic video. I'm going to trim some of this away from these corners because I have a surprise in how we're going to finish this. Let me go ahead and get my double-sided tape started here. Ah, uh, there's my ruler. So normally I hold my ruler down here, but see if I do that, you're not going to be able to see well. I feed it between, you know, see that won't work. How far can I go? I have a mess in here right now. How far can I go with you still seeing it? Well, it's probably about as far as I can go. So we're going to grab out another ruler. Oh, uh, here we go. This will work too. I'm just going to lay this down here at the one inch. Make sure I'm still in screen. I am. I need to get some better double sided tape because if I'm not careful and I don't seal this down when I'm done with it, it loses its sticky. All right, so my first one is gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna follow the directions and I'm going to put one under each card slot. That's what the directions in the pattern say. So 
uh, you might have to just pop it up a little bit so you can kind of see where you're going with it. And then I'm cutting strips just a teeny bit bigger. Than uh, what you would do in the normal pattern. I'm just going to go right down the line. My strips are looking a little crooked. I'm going to show you how to do the first couple and then I'll do the rest off camera so we can get to the exciting stuff. one more at the top about an inch down there we go we have some stuff around here so I have some room So first we're going to peel off this first one, there we go, and we're going to fold this up, align it right on that, and you want to try to make sure you're covering those holes. So that's the first one, now we're going to come down. nice little crease with your finger. Try to maintain it being straight. And then you're going to press on that one. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'll flip this over and I'm going to sew right along that line, making sure that I'm not in that seam. Okay, so I sewed the first one down. There you go. You can see my stitch there. So the next step is going to be to pull that one off. You're going to hold where you had just put that tape down there at the bottom. You're going to hold it so you don't want to stretch anything or you make your slots all wonky. Just try to keep it nice and straight. Come back up to that next line. Now we're going to go up a half an inch. So find my half an inch, cut my tape, come back down, straighten that up a little bit, there we go. Strip back down, hold it, make a nice little crease, hold it nice and straight. Hopefully, you won't be having to work around the tripod. And then fold it there. And now I'm going to sew across this line. I flip it over and sew it. So I will be sewing it from this side, and I'm going to sew right underneath that card slot. If I want to check this to see if it's good, Go ahead and stick my card in here and it'll be good. Let's double check that now. Let me fold it, flip it. Let's see. So my card's all the way in there. I probably could have went up a little bit more. So keep that in mind if you want to, you can go up a little bit more. But I think that that will actually work out fine. It's not enough of a difference for me to change it. But I'm going to go sew and then I'll do the rest of these card slots and I'll see you when I'm done. There we 
right, so I did run out. So it's a good thing that I went ahead and cut the extra one. So I went ahead and seamed this. You could either butt them up together or you could seam it like you would seam a, like you're doing binding on a quilt. So I just kind of did it that way. I didn't make it super neat. I didn't measure. Um, I didn't do any of that stuff that you're supposed to do. You can see I kind of started off it, but in the end, this is a card slot. And this is probably my least favorite thing to do when it comes to making any kind of bags. But there you go. And I could iron that and make it even flatter, but it's a card slot. And we're getting towards the end anyway. Let me flip it the right way here. I only have two more to do, but I did want to show you I had to do that. So if you enlarge this pattern, be prepared for that. All right, so there's all my card slots. They're all done. I finished it up with that double-sided tape up at the top. There they are, all looking pretty. I did matching fabrics. They all work. See, these are actually a little bit higher. Let me make sure here. And it's not real positive on why because they're all measured the same but it is what it is I would probably take this up maybe a one and a half inches instead of just the one inch and that would probably give it better results but I measured them all out the same I don't know I did that at one inch yeah I would probably go up about one and a half so the next thing I want to do is I think I'm going to sew these together, right sides together. And I did cut this one too big, but I think that'll be fine because I can trim it. I need to figure out where I want to leave an opening because then I'm going to turn it and then I'm going to top stitch. So let's see my clips. I'll go ahead and mark. I think I'll do it here because you don't want it too close to a to an end. I'm thinking that should be enough to flip it. Um, I didn't back these with any kind of um, decaville because well I probably should. Huh. I think it's gonna be fine yeah I'm not going to I'm gonna leave it but you could you could cover these with some tape actually you know what I could do is how big is that this is my super duper sticky and that kind of works if you have some masking tape or something else, even a little duct tape I've seen people do, just to go over that. And that's only to prevent the fabric on the other side from kind of getting worn. I'm not peeling this off so it's not going to be stuck. But it's just enough to kind of protect that fabric. A lot of times I will use like a little piece of usable fleece on it. That tends to be my go-to. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple clips here. All right, and clip inside here. And I'm gonna sew a quarter inch to an eighth all the way around. I think I'm going to sew on the vinyl side so that way I can see it obviously since it's the smaller side that way I won't miss just a couple clips all right 
No, I just want to check something to make sure. Yeah, they're going to be the same size. All right, I'll be back after I sew this together. Okay, so I went ahead and I sewed all the way around it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim it. And this was really easy curves. It wasn't bad curves at all. I'm going to leave this part so we'll come in. So if you're worried about doing the curve, these are really easy to navigate. I didn't have any issues at all with them. Um, my stitch length was two and a half, which is what I tend to do for everything except for top stitching. Top stitching, I generally do it back to about a three to a four, depending on what I'm top stitching. I'm just trimming this out. You can tell I got closer to the edge on some than others. It's fine. Anything I'm going to stress about. Here we go. Now you could, if you're worried about these curves or you want to make them smoother, I'm just going to cut a couple snips in these corners. And that's just going to help it lay flat. If you have pinking shears, you could also do pinking shears. Be careful not to clip your stitches. I think I need to lay off on the caffeine. I got the shaky hands going. I've cut through my stitches doing this a few times for other bags. It's not fun. It's just a pain because then you got to go back and restitch. Now that one was pretty close, but I didn't get it. Alright. Did you get them all? I got them all. Alright, here's my opening. Everybody's favorite part is birthing. Flipping it inside out. You know, the fun part. That's why you want to make sure you um, secure those stitches in the beginning and the end of that hole. And just try to gently push it through the hole. Don't tug it. You have plenty of room. I think I left about a two inch hole. I'll measure it in a second, but see, it was easy. Easy peasy. I'm just gonna run my finger in here. Flatten it all out. almost stick my whole hand in here just push those corners out even going around where these snaps were was not a problem with my machine I do have my zipper foot on right. so there you go even these out and then I'm gonna go and top stitch but let me see if I can measure that opening it is about, you know, maybe a little more than what I thought. One, two, about three and a half inches. So now for this, I am going to do clips. Just roll it between your fingers. The more clips, the better. Now you just roll roll between your fingers get that seam nice and flat in the middle since this is vinyl I can't really iron it but I think it'll be fine so you see where I'm kind of going with this one it's gonna be a little bit different just another way to do that fabulous pattern the first towel I guess I need to figure out where I'm gonna stick those the um, wristlet strap. I don't really think about that yet. Alright. So that's what the back's going to look like. 
This is going to meet together. And then we will have the zipper pocket also. That can be pretty. And then you open it up and get your card slots. I love it. Let me go top stitch this and I will be back. Okay, so I had all of that done. I probably should have left, I probably should have done my seam allowance more at a quarter. I did it more at an eighth. It made it very hard to come back in here and top stitch and I actually missed this. So it looks a little icky, but it's gonna be mine. So this was somebody else's. I would probably, if this was an order, I would have tear, torn that out and redone it, but it's not. But now I need to go ahead and find my halfway point. So I just folded it. I have the snaps there. I put my ruler in and I'm just pushing it firmly up against that the side there. Now I'm going to unsnap it. From a little chalk line stitch that down. I'll be back. Okay, so I top stitch that. Now I have my nice little fold there. So my other part of this, I still have to add my zipper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my zipper. Or pick out a zipper and see which one I want. So this is awesome. My microphone decided to stop working and I didn't realize it until after the fact. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I guess I'll overdub the rest of it. Hopefully you guys won't mind. But there I had some pre-made zippers and I was trying to figure out which color I wanted to go with. I was kind of leaning towards the blue, but then I had an orange one and I thought, well, maybe that orange one will be really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply that double-sided tape to the fabric, if I could find the end of it, that is. I like to put it on the fabric and not the zipper because this keeps you from seeing that tape peeking through. Sometimes if you put it on the zipper and you don't line it up just perfect, you end up with that sticky tape peeking through in that window and that's not fun. Ask me how I know. My purse right now, that's what happened. But I still love it. I made it. It functions and it's good. But trying to save you from having the same issue. I'm going to peel up one side if I can ever get that end up. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to line up that zipper. Make sure you have your zipper pull where you want it. And this was a pre-made zipper, so it's got the ends too I need to be aware of. Okay, so that zipper is all sewn in. Go ahead and trim it. Well, I had audio for a moment and then it's gone again, so I'm not really sure. But as I explained, I'm cutting the zipper ends off now. I love it. I'm glad I went with that orange zipper. It really pops. What do you think? Okay, so I'm going to surprise you with the color I have, but I want to make sure it's going to fit. And since I'm not using the pattern pieces, what I'm going to go ahead and do kind of just trace around it with my chalk. Hopefully that's leaving a mark. So I probably should check. Yeah, it leaves a mark. Well, isn't this super fun? I'm just going to sit here and go back and forth between having audio and overdubbing. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. I'll try to figure this out. It seems like it runs and then it goes into slow-mo and when it goes into slow-mo I lose my microphone. I've never had that issue before but you know it happens. I went ahead on this as you can see I just was tracing it out with the chalk and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out with my rotary cutter. I'm gonna go in maybe an eighth of an inch shorter. So you'll see me getting the, the measuring thing out there and measuring it out just to see. But I wanted to get it about an eighth of an inch smaller so that way it'll fit right inside the, the, the fabric part of it. So you'll see me futz around here a little bit, 
trying to cut it all out. Are you ready for the reveal? Wait till you see this color. Ah, I love it! What do you think? So at this point, I realized I had made a big mistake. And since this wasn't something live and I couldn't get you guys to yell at me and say, stop, Sherry, stop. You're about to really screw up. I had a dilemma and it almost made me want to just stop and go inside and get a whole gallon of ice cream and just eat my way back to happiness. But I didn't. What I did was when I went ahead and did my heat transfer vinyl, I screwed up and I forgot to cut out my window. So that meant the heat transfer vinyl stuck to my zipper. And well, that wasn't good. And apparently heat transfer vinyl really likes a zipper. So I ended up having to clean that up, cut it up, pick it away, and I got it figured out but not before wanting to go eat a whole lot of ice cream. Here I'm just showing you how I had to kind of wiggle my scissors in there and try to get between the zipper and the vinyl and um, trim it away and not trim that zipper or go through it. And it really, really had bonded. So it was not an easy task. Um, probably was ready to throw in the towel. Actually, I know I was ready to throw in the towel because I may have shed a few tears and said a few bad words and then, you know, debate about whether I needed to run to the store and get that ice cream. But I ended up getting it cleared away. And I also really debated about whether or not I would go ahead and finish this video and upload this video. I decided I would do it because we all make mistakes and the way we learn is from our mistakes. So. I was able to fix this one. It was for me, so I wasn't too concerned about, you know, if it didn't look perfect. Definitely if this was for sale or for me to give to somebody else, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have kept on. I would have redone that whole section. But I in here I'm just showing you how in the other one, my whole purpose of that was to cover up that zipper tape and the other that other example i did that and it covered up the zipper tape completely and it was perfect and that's all i was trying to do it just didn't work out the way i wanted but live and learn make sure you guys don't make that same mistake so now i'm just checking to make sure everything is going to fit and everything's going to line up and and all that good stuff and it looked pretty good you know i was disappointed there were some things that, you know, had I practiced this before, I probably would have caught and would have not made the same mistakes, but I didn't, and it's all good. So now I'm just going to lay it out. I'm, I'm kind of debating about how I want to sew this down. At some point, I do remember I have to add my wrist, wristlet strap, so I was showing you there where you could put a snap if you wanted to. Of course, I got it off screen, but if you wanted to, you could put a snap there in that bill area. Um, it would have been really, really good. But I love that fabric. Absolutely love that fabric. What do you think? So the light bulb went off where I needed to go ahead and do my D-ring um, strap. So I went ahead and I cut my vinyl and put my super duper heavy duty, super sticky tape down. I folded it to meet in the middle. And then once I had it meet in the middle, I took it over to the sewing machine and I top stitched along either side. Don't worry about that tape if it's if it's too sticky for your machine because you're not really sewing it on the tape. You're, you're just sewing right there along the edge um, about, you know, an eighth of an inch. You know, as, as close to that edge as you can to make it nice and smooth. I ended up going with a triangle ring versus a D ring. Um, I like this because I can put a key fob, I can attach all kinds of things to that little loopy hole and I don't have to worry about things sliding around. 
I was trying to figure out the best way to place this. I wish I would have remembered it earlier because that way I could have tucked it in between those fabric layers when I was sewing. Because now, unfortunately, another mistake. Now it's going to be in between the two and you will be able to see it when you look inside. And I know I keep saying it, but this is for me, so I'm okay with that. If I was selling this or giving this to somebody else, I wouldn't be okay with that and I would have had to fix that. So I rec would recommend before you sew your either your, um, probably the, the vinyl with the card slots, I would go ahead and slide it in there and tack it down and then flip it. Maybe I'll show that in another video, but that's probably what I would have recommended. I wasn't thinking, and at that point, all I had on my mind was the gallon ice cream. For this almost last part, I was going, I went ahead and aligned everything up and went ahead and used all my, um, my clips just to secure it so that way I could stitch those two pieces together. Um, it, it really, came together pretty good. Again, I really do think adding a snap to that one compartment would have went pretty well. Uh, I think over here, I'm just reiterating when you're going through this, make sure you go back and forth a few times because you really want to get that, that ring secured. I really like how that triangle ring looks though. I think those are pretty cool. I think I'm going to be using those more often. I top stitched. I had no problem getting around those snaps and I did it at about an eighth of an inch and I did do it with the vinyl side up and not down because I feel like it's easier to control with things that could possibly stick to the machine if I did it that way. I don't think you'll have a problem because I'm sure you guys are all going to be able to nail this on the first try. I got faith in you. I really do like how this came out. Um, I think the three snaps definitely give you more security. I think on that side there, you could add like a clear vinyl slot, or you could even add a whole nother row of card slots if you wanted to do more, or even maybe one of those little things like a slip pocket where you could put a notebook in if you want to do like a grocery list or something like that, or a secret, secret pocket stash, you know, whatever you'd like to do. I think adding um, those snaps were a good idea. I think adding a snap, well, not the zipper. I don't know why I'm showing you the zipper. I guess maybe it explained to you that my phone will fit. That's it, that's it. See, I'm trying to go back in time. My phone, which that's an iPhone, it fit in that, which is pretty awesome. And I think I would put a snap on that if I did it again. I really was also debating about doing a zipper there, but it did give me some great ideas for a future pattern. Hmm, where, what will I do and where will I go with that? You'll just have to subscribe and see. I think it turned out really good. I'm sorry that most of this didn't show up on the camera. I think at that point I had hit my tripod so many times and was just pretty frustrated with how this project turned out. Even though I really like it, it's for me and I will use it and I will love it. And I will also probably notice every mistake I've made. It will get well used and it's going to be well loved. Okay, so I finished that. And I'm not so sure that I really like it. I mean, I do like it. But there's so many things now that it's just making my head spin that I want to do. So it gave me some ideas so for a self-drafted pattern, which is going to have the zipper in that dollar bill compartment and i might do something different with the edges and i've got an idea for that pocket so stay tuned because i think i have an awesome idea for a wallet let me know what you think don't forget to subscribe and and click that notification bell and if you like this and you think somebody else could use this these tips and tricks go ahead and share it out i would love it absolutely love it you guys, in your comments, you make my day. I do this for you. I do it for me. I do it so that we could all learn together. And I lost audio halfway through this. So, yeah, I had to overdub some of this. I'm sorry about that. I'm a work in progress. What can I say?
It is what it is, and I will try my best to continue to get better each time. I would love some feedback. Let me know what you think. You guys have a great day, and don't forget to keep sewing. Bye-bye.